You know, Edmund Husserl, who was the mentor of both Sartre and Martin Heidegger, two of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century, was, a f was taught that the distinctive characteristic, get this, Ben, that distinguishes human beings from the brutes is the principle of intentionality. Hmm. Namely, that as thinking, cogent creatures, we can act with intention, which means design. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, the question is this. How can you get intentionality unintentionally? Oh, that's, how can, that's the basic how, question. Well, and you might also ask a very closely related question. That's, that's a fine question. How can a speck of mud have any intention? How can a speck of mud that happens to have eyes and ears and teeth and a nose have any intention? Mud has no intention. And th by the way, the Darwinists respond to that. It's false consciousness. You're not really even conscious. Right. You're not conscious at no, all. It's just a material impulse. It's just a material impulse. Mm -hmm. And it's just And it's if just that's an the illusion. case, why do they bother to teach anybody or to say anything well or put, write anything? R well put. Well put. I'm, uh, I got into this subject uh, fairly recently. I, I've always been a... a a very active member of the Right to Life community, even though I'm in Hollywood where such things are forbidden. But uh, I was approached maybe two and a half or three years ago by Walt Ruloff and uh, some of his friends, uh, he's the producer of the movie, um, and told about intelligent design. And I uh, went for it immediately, and I said, uh, because if Darwinism is correct, and if we're all just accidents, and if we're all just haphazard descendants of a mud puddle, then Hitler was right. And Hitler was totally right. You can kill six million Jews, has no moral significance at all, any more than wiping mud off your shoe would have. Uh, but if life did not originate randomly, not by random mutation and natural selection, but uh, that there was some design involved by, a all power, by an all-powerful designer, then it's an incredibly horrible event which must never be repeated. And uh, then we got more and more into the complexity of the cell, the incredible uh, gaps in Darwinism about how man, uh, there is no, no man has any idea of how human life began or how organic life began. And I, I, it suddenly dawned on me, there's much more sense, reason, logic on our side than on the Darwinist side. And the Darwinists are so fearful, so angry, so absolutely unwilling to concede an inch that I realized theirs is a very tenuous hold on power and we're going to try to make it a tiny little bit more tenuous. And uh, so we, we started working on this movie. We've been all over the U.S. and Europe and interviewed many, many scientists. And uh, we have this movie, Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. It's coming out April 11th or April 17th, or, or April 11th or April 18th. And we hope it makes people question the scientific orthodoxy. And by the way, sometimes as I go around talking about this, People say, well, what about the decision in Dover, Pennsylvania? You're a Pennsylvanian. What about the decision in Dover, Pennsylvania that said uh, the teaching intelligent design in schools was forbidden? And I say, I don't care about that decision. Courts said slavery was fine. Courts said segregation was fine. Courts said no, no black man had any rights that a white man was bound to observe. Courts say that abortion, murdering the innocent among us, the most innocent among us, is perfectly fine. So what courts say doesn't really go that far with me. No, of course not. <laughs> I'm so glad you're doing this. I love the title, Expel, the, 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 the first part of the title, because I remember when I was a kid, I got in a fight in high school, and they expelled me from school. And I'm that sure meant they let you back out. They back did, in, but yeah. it, was, it was only for three days. Uh -huh. But I experienced that where for those three days, I was not allowed mm -hmm. on the property mm -hmm. of the school. Of the school and that's what this is about, mm -hmm. only not a three-day suspension, but we're expelling some of the deepest philosophical inquiries in the history of humanity. You go back in time, Immanuel Kant, the dean of Western philosophers who argued against the traditional arguments for the existence of God, said the one that bothered him the most was the teleological argument, the argument from design. Mm -hmm. He said, I can't get away from it. David Hume said the same thing. Are we allowed now to say in the school you can't study Einstein? When Einstein says God doesn't play dice, that has to be expurgated from any study of uh, Albert Einstein. And Newton this said he was doing no more than explaining how God had organized the universe. And he said he, he was thinking God's thoughts after him. 
So, yeah, you're not allowed to say that now. Newton you, has to go. Einstein has to go. If you said that in a college classroom now, if you didn't have tenure, you would very likely be denied tenure forever for that. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're going to get letters and things. Oh, oh, our school's not like that. But it's happening more and more and more, and we see it in the newspapers every day. The thing is, the, uh, the stance against intelligence de design is not an intelligent stance. And no, there's no logic to it. If you want to talk about irrationality, then try to talk about something coming into being from nothing by itself. It would have to be self-created, and for something to create itself it would have to be before it was, which is a violation of the most rudimentary principle of knowledge, the law of non-contradiction. Well, my, my, uh, my debating partner, so to speak, Christopher Hitchens, said, well, then who created God? <laughs> and I said, well, the di what we, we don't have any problem with that question at all because God is what always was and always will be. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's what God is. God I, isn't I a I try to bubble. point out to people the difference between the concept of self-creation, which is uh, <clears throat> what you call uh, referentially self-destructive because it's an inherent contradiction, and the concept of self-existence. The idea of a self-existent, eternal being that has the power of being within himself, dependent on nothing outside of himself to be, and is eternal, violates no formal concept of logic whatsoever. In fact, well, if, right. as I say, the simplest argument for intelligent design is this, if anything exists now, something has always existed. Right. Something is eternal. Or nothing could be now. When I was talking with uh, Sagan about all of this, and I talked about you telling me that for eternity, that all of, of the universe was compacted into this infinitesimal point of singularity with all energy and mass compressed in a state of total organization and stability for eternity. Then one Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock, boom, it blows up. Now what happened to the law of inertia? I asked Sagan that. I said, you tell me that things that are at rest stay at rest unless acted mm -hmm. upon by what? He said, I don't want to go there, an outside force. You have to deny your own uh, science to argue that way. You know, it's nuts. I mean, Holy people want to laugh at it instead of just... Where did uh, you learn all this stuff? What? Where did you learn this? You're very, very well educated. I'm stunned. Oh, no, it's just it's common stuff. I mean, this no, is... No, it isn't. It isn't <laughs> common stuff. You're very, 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 very smart and well informed. Well, thank moment. you for that, but... Uh, I mean, these are issues that have been debated for centuries, Ben. I know that, but, but the difference, here's the difference. Here's what's so frightening. We live in the first country in the world to have a constitutional guarantee of free speech, and it is being eliminated in the place where we need it most, the college and the university. You're right. And I just want to thank you again for the service you're doing. Well, thank you. Not just for, for people of faith. But for science I, itself. I think for the country. For the whole country. And for the dignity of human beings. Oh, well, God that's bless what you. this and the well, final analysis, that's in, what this is I'll about. I'll come hide in your guest bedroom when the Darwin has come to get me. <laughs> anyway, thank you so well, so much. We wish you thank all you. of the best thank success. Thank you so much. We'll, I hope everybody out there that's listening to this will make every effort to see this movie well, thank you. expelled. No to, intelligence allowed. No intelligence right. April, allowed. April middle of April. Middle of April. Thank, thank you, you so much. Very, very thank much. you. Thank you. Thank you.